and welcome to our youtube channel here again on tuesday evening and we're going to carry on with the power of prayer as from last week you know we've still got about 16 items to go so this will take us maybe a week or two to get through in any case if you're new to the youtube channel um you'll find semester one two three introductory courses to the wisdom of kabbalah and if you take fancy then you can always go to kabbalah.info and join like-minded people at the cab academy from all around the world You'll find that the wisdom of Kabbalah is really a wisdom about the essence of our lives and how we can actually how we can actually place ourselves in reality in a balanced way. In the interim, though, we're going to carry on where we left off with item number 20. The topic is everything attained by the power of prayer. As usual, I'll read it once, I'll read it twice. We'll see what we can get out of the article. If you have any questions, shoot them through as usual. We'll try to come up with the solutions from the source material this is from this is excerpt number 20 item number 40 from meshiva nefesh our sages said man's inclination overcomes him every day were it not for the help of the creator he would not overcome it rather man must only commit to strengthening himself each time anew and not retreat from this war or cause oneself despair under any circumstances. Certainly in this war, it is impossible to evidently see who is the winner, since the war is still long. The exile is intensifying, and each one experiences what he experiences. Yet, as long as we are holding our weapons in our hands, and our main weapon is the prayer, and as long as we do not cause ourselves despair from this war and keep gripping to our weapons, we are winning for sure. Since, as long as one strengthens oneself in prayer and outcry to the Creator, he is winning the war, as this is essentially the victory. Okay, so let's go over that again. Again, excerpt number 20 from item number 40, Mishfat Nefesh. Our sages said man's inclination overcomes him every day. So our inclination, as you know, is our egoistic nature. So every day we're actually defeated by our egoistic nature because we chase our desires. And we can't really overcome them. We can't defeat them. We can't beat them. So every day we're chasing them. Were it not for the help of the creator, he would not overcome it. So this means we need help from the outside, namely the creator. Rather, man must only commit to strengthening himself each time anew and not retreat from this war or cause oneself despair under any circumstances. So no matter how much we fail, and as it says here, man's inclination overcomes him every day. So this means we are defeated every day. Okay, But despite that fact, what we have to do is keep pushing on. Okay? So we mustn't let despair influence us or get the best of us you know? so all we have to do is just trot along certainly in this war 
it is impossible to evidently see who is the winner since the war is still long. The exile is intensifying and each, each one experiences what he experiences. Yet as long as we are holding our weapons in our hands and our main weapon is the prayer, and as long as we do not cause ourselves despair from this war and keep gripping to our weapons, we are winning for sure. Since as long as one strengthens oneself in prayer and outcry to the creator, he's winning the war as this is essentially the victory. All right, so we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring to us. Okay, we don't even know what the next second is going to bring to us, and that's all fine. You never know what life is going to bring, but you always have a plan, right? There's something you want to be in the future. There's something you want to attain in the future. But you don't know if that's going to happen or not. But you still keep pushing forward because you have some desires you want to fulfill. Or well, spirituality is not, it's not indifferent, really. It's a desire. It's a desire to find ourselves in a higher level of consciousness. Find ourselves at the reason instead of the cause of everything. So all we have to do is just make sure, just like we do in real life when we desire something really badly, that we just keep working on it. And this is the most important thing, just not to let go. Um, so we need a lot of patience along the way. Um, and many of us, unfortunately, lack patience. However, though, on the path, you must understand, no patience, no success. This actually goes for anything and everything else in life as well. So we can't really attain anything if we're not pushing patiently. Patience doesn't mean I sit and do nothing and just wait. Patience means I'm actively working every day. Okay, So I'm actively doing things to move forward. And I'm not letting any disappointments get along the way. So all I have to do is if I keep pushing forward, if I keep working, that constant work and pushing motion should actually keep building inside of me the prayer. As we've studied and learned on many occasions, a prayer is a desire in the heart. It's not lip service. It's not something I read from a book. A prayer is a person's desire. And if I want to really attain something and I keep working towards that, what I'm essentially doing is increasing my desire for what I want to attain. And one of the secrets to laws of nature and being happy is to have a big desire. Because if I have a big desire, then the desire and the pleasure can last longer. Because normally what happens is the pleasure cancels the desire. So you get left with nothing. So the reason the path is long is because it allows us to build a really vast big vessel, which we can actually accordingly afterwards fulfill with light and the pleasure will be great in it as well so all we have to do is just hold on to the path keep working consistently and therefore build that desire which is called a prayer and once we keep doing that on a consistent basis it means we are always moving forward okay that's why he's saying if we keep doing that we're winning for sure all right if there are any questions you guys let me know. All right, excerpt number 21. Let's read that. Excerpt number 21, Rabash, article number four. What is the prayer for help and for forgiveness in the work? This is a small excerpt from that article. Man's sin is that he did not ask the creator for help. Had he asked for help, he would certainly get help from the creator. But if a person says that he asked for help and the creator did not help him, to, to this comes the answer that a person should believe that the creator hears the prayers as it is written, for you hear the prayer of every mouth. If he truly believed, his prayer would be complete. And the creator hears a complete prayer when a person yearns with all his heart that the creator will help him. But if his prayer is not constantly on his lips, it means that he does not have the real faith that the creator can help him and that the creator hears everyone who asks him and that small and great are equal before him, meaning that he answers everyone. It follows that the prayer is incomplete. 
All right, let's do that again. So it's trying to give us a hint as to what kind of a prayer we need to build inside of us. Man's sin is that he did not ask the Creator for help. Okay, so that's the sin. There is no other sin. Okay, because we're working, we want to get corrected. We see the defects in us, in our relationships. We want to fix it. We understand we can't fix our own nature. So we need a change here from nature, which is the Creator. And that's the sin that I'm not asking for help, that I'm actually not wanting to get corrected. Okay. Had he asked for help, he would certainly get help from the creator. But if a person says that he asked for help and the creator did not help him, to this comes the answer that a person should believe that the creator hears the prayers as it is written, for you hear the prayer of every mouth. Now, this is a complaint every student has, or at one time or another had. All right, they say we pray, 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 nothing really happens. Okay, it's not really true. It's because you're not at the right strength or at the intensity of the prayer. A prayer means I, I don't want anything else. That's what a prayer means. Okay, it means a prayer means I only want one thing. And that one thing you want need to be, needs to be the right thing that the creator wants to give so that you will get an answer to your prayer. If they don't match, it's not really going to happen, is it? Okay. So we've got to match what the creator wants to give. And it means we can't have any other desire. This is why he's saying, what is he saying? If he truly believed his prayer would be complete. And the creator hears a complete prayer when a person yearns with all his heart that the creator will help him. So only and only if I yearn with all my heart that the creator will help me, that is when I will get help. But if his prayer is not constantly on his lips, it means that he does not have the real faith that the creator can help him and that the creator hears everyone who asks him and that small and great are equal before him meaning that he answers everyone, it follows that the prayer is, is incomplete. So that's the condition. Okay, You hear the prayer of every mouth. So if he truly believed his prayer would be complete, and the Creator hears a complete prayer when a person yearns with all his heart, that the Creator will help him. So I must not have any other yearning at all. Okay, I hope the sound is good. Yeah, okay, great. So let's move forward to excerpt number 22. This is again from Rabash, article number 23. What is, whoops, see that easy. What is, if he swallows the bitter herb, he will not come out in the work. Even when he comes to know that the creator can help him, and he understands that the real advice is only prayer. The body comes and makes him see that you see how many prayers you have already prayed, but you received no answer from above. Therefore, why bother praying that the creator will help you? You see that you see that you're not getting any help from above. At that time, he cannot pray. Then we need to overcome once more through faith and believe that the creator does hear the prayer of every mouth and it does not matter if the person is adept and has good qualities or to the contrary rather he must overcome and believe above reason although his reason dictates that since he has prayed many times but still received no answer from above how can he come and pray once more this too requires overcoming meaning to exert above reason and pray that the creator will help him overcome his view and pray. Wow, this is the kind of stubbornness, as you can see, we need to have on the path. All right, so let's go step by step. Even when he comes to know that the creator can help him and he understands that the real advice is only prayer, 
the body comes and makes him see that you see how many prayers you have already prayed, but you receive no answer from above. Therefore, why bother praying that the creator will help you? Now, this is a classic situation. Okay, so you need to put this into the classics of your mental archive. Okay, because that's just how it is. You pray and then you say, well, why do I bother anyway? Okay, because I'm not getting any results. Okay, but obviously that's not how things pan out. So this is where we need the stubbornness of a small child who wants to get what it wants to get. Okay. You see that you're not getting any help from above. It's true. We're not getting any help from above. We see that happening. At that time, he cannot pray. We see that we can't pray then either because we are kind of like, well, ticked off a little bit, aren't we? We're a little upset with the situation, upset with the creator. Okay, but what can you do? This is just how it is. All right. So that's a situation we also need to overcome. Then we need to overcome once more through faith and believe that the creator does hear the prayer of every mouth. And it does not matter if the person is adept and has good qualities or to the contrary. Rather, he must overcome and believe above reason, although his reason dictates that since he has prayed many times, but still received no answer from above, how can he come and pray once more? This too requires overcoming, meaning to exert above reason and pray that the creator will help him overcome his view and, and get a reply, I guess, and pray. Okay, at the end of the day, we need to come to this understanding that only the creator can help us. Okay, but this disappointment, I guess, or when we're feeling this, um, how do you call it in English? Well, in Hebrew, it's yush. I can't remember it. Despair, that's it. Despair. All right. So when you come to despair, then it's a bit of a um, problem. But if you stick to your framework, if you stick to your guns, and if you keep pushing forward by getting help from the environment, from your friends, if everybody supports each other, then you can overcome this and you can keep pushing. But once you're on your own and you're disconnected from the group, then you've got no, you know, you don't have this, you know, plug to, to stick in for electricity. You can't recharge yourself because there's, there's nobody around. In life, it's the same thing. Well, why do we have friends? Why do we have family? Because it's like a support mechanism, isn't it? You know, so like we're around people that we care about. They care about us. We care about them. So we build around ourselves a support mechanism. This is how communities are built because they help each other. And if we don't help each other, then none of us are going to get anywhere. This is why we have to be a community, a group of people with the same objective. And, yeah, we have to have the same kind of objective. All righty. So let's move on to item number 22. Are there any questions? Let me check. Ingrid is asking, isn't the act of overcoming an egoistic, egoistic act as if we are proud to be stronger than ego. Well, not if you're doing it with the group. Because it, it doesn't mention the group here. But if you think about it, where are we really getting all our juice from? You know, where are we getting the fuel to move forward when we're having a down day or a bad day? It's always from the environment. And if it's from the environment, I can't really associate being strong with myself you know we come to the lessons we listen to something and we're getting understanding and then we're all of a sudden you know having the power to move on the lessons influence us the friends influence us we have meals we have congresses we have gatherings they influence us they give us forces to move forward so 
it's actually not egoistic. We don't have any strength. If we study correctly, we'll understand sooner than later that we have no strength at all. Yeah. That's when you start to build a real prayer because you just understand that there's nothing you can do. Hello, one story about the little drama. We're back in action Jackson mode at the moment. We just had a bit of a disconnection issue here. But now we're back. We're carrying on with excerpt number 22. And if you have any questions as we go through, just shoot them through as usual. So we're done with Ingrid and Elchin, yeah? It's all good? All good. So excerpt number 22. Yes, 22. No, no, no. Action is not good. Action is not good? Okay. If we do not feel safe and cannot envision the next moment in our minds, with which prayer can we turn to the Creator? You can turn to the Creator to strengthen yourself again in the group. There's no other way. All right? Because I tell you why. What the mind can't do now, time will do. This is why they're asking us to be patient and keep pushing along because there's no other way. I can't have a kid go from three to nine and not go through four, five, six, seven, eight. Every step of the way has to be lived, experienced, and it has to build up inside of the person. If you feel like you're lacking something, you can turn to the creator with anything you feel like you're lacking. It's not a problem. The important thing is the study should bring me to the right lack. It should bring me to the right need for the creator. See what I mean? Otherwise, a person can just pray for anything. Right? So if I do the work correctly inside of me, an, a, a lack should build. Okay? Right, yeah, the right kind of lack. And strength, you have to get from the group, okay? There's no other way. But let's say your 10 is weak. All right, let's say you've got a weak 10. Okay, let's say they're not always there. Let's say you're hanging out on your own more often than not, okay? It happens. So what do you got to do? You got to stick to us. Yeah, you got to stick to the group, the main group. You got to stick to the group. You got to stick your head in there. And sooner or later, we'll have to find a way. This is true for all of us. Okay, it's true for all of us. Now, let's just go through Ingrid's question as well. Ingrid's asking Isn't the act of overcoming an egoistic act as we are proud to be stronger than ego? Well, normally, if that was. If that was the case, yeah, but that's not the case. Why? Because we've read two excerpts ago that our evil inclination is defeating us every day, right? So every day we're going through a defeat. And the only way to keep going and pushing forward to overcome these obstacles and carry on is the same advice I just gave Elchin is to actually get strength from the environment. Okay, and if we don't have the right environment, if we don't have an environment that's like feeding us, giving us that energy, if there isn't this recharge port called the environment, the 10 or the group or the study, the lessons, you know, the things we do for the group, like dissemination, I don't know, even cleaning the center, the kitchen or whatever. Yeah, if we don't have these things that tie us to the goal, physically, emotionally, mentally, then we won't be able to go forward. And in time, we begin to realize, in fact, that we have no strength at all. None. And it's just the environment really helping us out. And that's if I stick my head in there. Some people run away from the environment. You know, they get sick and tired of it. They want to, they, you know, they want to do things on their own. 
they want to feel strong on their own they want to move forward on their own and obviously that's not going to happen because we're going against our nature so that cannot happen you see what i mean so over time we begin to understand that we have no strength at all this path really sucks our energy out it's like this vampire on your neck right constantly depleting your energy and it is so it's they actually it says actually once torah weakens a person it's true okay so if we study right we should always be feeling like unable to overcome unable to do anything really hmm. mahir is asking how should i pray and study to the creator for the fear of not being like the creator in reality or for the fear of not being able to love friends how should i pray to the creator for the fear of not being like the creator in reality fearing not to be like the creator i don't know if i understood your question right what you're afraid to bestow where's my here you're you're afraid to bestow no oh you will be you work with us a little bit you will be afraid of bestowing you won't want to lose anything from your life yeah you'll want not to bestow it'll feel like you're praying to the creator but at the back of your mind you'll be thinking i hope he doesn't make me bestow mm. yeah that's how it will come to <clears throat> how can you pray to the creator guys you can only pray to the creator with one one there's only one way to pray to the creator and that's what you lack inside you understand what i mean whatever you lack is your prayer okay if you understand what you should lack but you're not lacking what you should lack then you can ask for that lack as well okay that's also a prayer but that's a prayer before the prayer it's like a preparation for the prayer it's not even a real prayer you understand what i mean a prayer is not a lip service we can't just sit and pray like you're going to a church or something or a synagogue or a mosque no it's not going to happen that way we should be doing the work among the friends and we should really feel inside that i lack this thing called the love of others and always feel like i don't love anyone and i feel like i can't love anyone and not only that i keep feeling like this self love is hurting me every day and i can't get rid of it when you come to that kind of a sensation and that's the only thing in your mind you just want to get rid of your self love because you feel it's like really bad and damaging and then that should be in your mind and heart all the time then that's a right lack but that takes time to build it takes a lot of effort for a person because you got to work a lot with the friends this is why we're always working on the love of others why are we working on loving others what are we nuts so that we can reveal our true nature which is absolutely the opposite of loving others it's crazy but it's true it's like life you try to become a good doctor let's say and everything in you all of a sudden preventing you from being a good doctor starts to surface and now you have to overcome all those things that prevent you from being that good doctor or that good singer 
or that good, I don't know, whatever you want to be, then you have to work on that weakness, don't you? Right? Because you begin to see there's something in you that's just not allowing you to love other people. Now, with things like our career or worldly objectives, you can overcome these things if you work on them. But overcoming our own nature, making something out of myself which is not in my nature at all, is just impossible. And this is why they're talking so much about despair. Because you're working on it, you're constantly frustrated because you just can't seem to manage this. And then you can't even pray for the right thing. It's like you, you just feel like you're a retarded person. It, it just feels like you don't know what to ask for. You don't know what you're going through. And yet everything is blurry. You don't even know what bestowal is. And you're feeling all lost. And that's the kind of emptiness, the kind of need for help we need to get to. Do you understand what I mean? That's a prayer. This is why he says in the beginning, the sin is not because you're bad. It's because you're not turning to the creator to fix the bad. Right? So this is why the path is a bit long, as we've read in the previous excerpt. So a person needs to go a long way, work on himself a long time to really come to the understanding that he or she is in trouble. We're in trouble with this desire to receive for ourselves. Can't get rid of it. Want to get out of it. We begin to see it's really evil. It's really a disgusting trait to be in. And you feel like you're absolutely helpless against it. And that's when you can pray. But until you see that, there is no prayer. It's like we're like kids screaming for candy. Okay. So in order to really come to a prayer, I have to understand that the help I'm seeking is a matter of life and death. And there's nothing I can do about it. Somebody from the outside, another force from the outside must come and help me out. That's a prayer. So it needs a bit of work, as you can see, right? Okay. Let's see. All right. Now we've got another question. Ingrid is asking, what to do if one knows one needs to study Kabbalah, but now one has much greater desire for material stuff well that's not a bad thing because the more we study the wisdom of kabbalah our desire for materialism is going to increase it's not going to decrease we're going to want more things we're going to want more still more vegetative more animate more human level we're going to want more things yeah that's nice that's how it should be Okay, so you probably did some good work. How to be drawn again to Kabbalah without suffering to come? Ah, that you got to use the group. This is exactly what's going to happen because we're growing up. As we grow up, we have bigger desires, don't we? We don't have the same desires that we used to have when we were a few years old or when we were babies. The more we grow up, the more desires we have. So the more desires we have, the greater resistance, the greater overcoming, the greater mental and psychological and physical capacity we're going to need to overcome and stay on the path. And how are you going to be smart about it? Because we're studying human nature, we need to be influenced by the group to get the importance of spirituality above my current corporal reality right now. In the interim also, it doesn't mean you have to express your worldly desires. Okay? You just have to make a calculation. All right? This is why we don't teach ethics in the wisdom of Kabbalah. We teach 
human nature, how to cope with it via the environment, and how to go about changing it via the help of the creator. And that's the wisdom. Therefore, we don't need to be bogged down with the desire. We need to be thinking about why we want to do what we're doing. So living in the intention is the priority for us. Okay? So this is why it doesn't mean if you've got now materialistic desires, you don't have to bury your head in the sand either. It will not work. All right? Because you've got big desires that will come and bite you. What you've got to do is use the environment to increase the importance of spirituality. All right? There's no other way. Because at the end of the day, you're going to chase what you feel is more important. All right? Okie dokie. All right. So let's call it a night. How about that? So we read 22, yeah? Did we? We read 22. Okay. So next week, we're going to be on 23. And we'll carry on from there. Okay, sounds good. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I think these lessons are really good. I'm really getting benefit out of it, like how to turn to the creator, because it's like every time we do a lesson, it's like a new page for us. Okay, it's like we're adding something new every day. We add something new. We add something new. We add something. It's like taking a shower every day with the material. Okay, we're kind of like cleaning ourselves out. So everything we went through today, and now we've studied a bit of spirituality, we kind of like washed it down. It's like having a good meal and washing it down with a good, nice, strong Turkish coffee. All right, you guys have a good night, and we'll see you guys next time, hopefully.